NBC News, the very same guys that made videos like how Star Wars is apparently racist, decided to make a video against gamers by connecting gamers to the alt-right. I decided to respond to this video mostly because I have nothing better to do in my spare time. Before white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and white nationalists marched in Charlottesville, Virginia in August, they were organizing behind a computer screen. And a lot of that organizing happened through a messaging service called Discord, which was originally created to connect video game players to one another. This is just the latest in the long-running shared history between the gaming community and the alt-right. The problem with the premise of this video is that gamers are not a single political ideology. There are gamers that are left-wing, there are gamers that are right-wing, there are gamers that are liberals, there are gamers that are republicans. Not a single gamer had the same ideology and the same belief system as each other. The only commonality that gamers have is the fact that they play video game. By your very logic, if somebody, for example, were to drink milk, and a Nazi also drank milk, that means that that person who drank the milk must be the very same thing as the Nazi who also drank milk. Another example is slavery. Because white people want to slave black people, that means that the white people today are the same thing and as guilty as the white people in the past that enslaved black people. You see how ridiculous that sounds? And so by assuming that all gamers are alt writers or support the all right, you remove people from their individuality and their political belief systems. Gaming culture has always been racist, it's always been sexist, but the internet has sort of allowed us to just sort of see what has always been there. Emma Vossen is a PhD candidate studying how sexism seeded in gaming is replicated in the real world. Her study is based on Gamergate, a movement that began with intimidating and harassing female video game journalists under the guise of fairness in video game journalism. The tweets that she showcased are not part of the Gamergate hashtag. On August the 27th, 2014, Anita Sarkeesian posted her tweets that she received during that day, and not a single tweet that she posted in regards to that person had the hashtag Gamergate underneath it. As far as Gamergate being a harassment group, according to the FBI, there is no links between Gamergate and harassment. Back in 2014, Anita Sarkeesian had an event in Utah, however, she received a number of bomb stress at that speech and claimed that it was actually Gamergate. It turns out the bomb stress, apparently the guy said they want to send over 9,000 bomb stress, which is like a reference to Dragon Ball Z. So essentially the FBI investigated that, and they saw no links between Gamergate and Anita Sarkeesian. Another example is somebody who tried to disguise himself as Mr. Repsion, also trying to harass Anita Sarkeesian. And again, there was no links between the harassment of Mr. Repsion and also Neo Sarkeesian. As far as the claim that gaming leads to more sexism, there is no link between the two at all, according to studies. Essentially, the studies say that once a person is done playing a video game, their empathy levels towards women have not dropped down. In other words, the claim that video games cause sexism is no different than the claim that video games causes violence. The harassment quickly gained traction. It helped catalyze the alt-right movement, which secured power and prominence during the 2016 election cycle. That claim right there is completely conspiratorial. And the main reason why it's so conspiratorial is because Gamergate and the alt-right are completely separate things. The alt-right is about white nationalism, whereas Gamergate was about games journalism. To say that games journalism and wanting ethics is the exact same thing as white nationalism is completely retarded. Not to mention, according to the data, the vast majority of Gamergaters are love wing. How can you say that Gamergate has connection to the alt-right if the vast majority of gamer gators are love wing. When you were studying Gamergate and you were really looking at the techniques that they use, it's impossible not to see the same techniques being used by Trump supporters. 
So because gamers post memes, therefore they're the exact same thing as Trump supporters. If a white supremacist wore pants, am I the exact same thing as the white supremacist? Oh, you like posting memes? Well guess what? You are a Trump supporter because we say so because Trump supporters like to post memes. According to Vossen, the gamers and the alt-right share common ground. As people who are marginalized are fighting for equality, those who traditionally had privilege, you know, especially white men, feel that they are being oppressed by these people who are trying to just be treated as equal. I love how you assume that minorities will support your progressive movement simply because they're minorities. As a minority myself, I do not support Black Lives Matter, I do not support feminism, and I do not support Antifa. Just because people are against feminism, or Black Lives Matter, or progressivism, does not therefore mean that they hate minorities just because they disagree with the politics of a person. By telling white people that they cannot say X about a movement simply because they're white, and that somehow minorities will feel attack if you disagree with that movement, you're trying to say that white people should feel guilted for not supporting X and that minorities are crybabies who cannot handle different opinions. That to me right there is a sign of the bigotry of low expectations. Essentially, you guys think that minorities are just people that need to be coddled. I'm sorry, but uh, I left my diaper days when I was fucking three years old, so uh, no calling from you guys anytime soon. Why do you hate black people? African Americans. They're dirty, they're stingy, and they're just gross. Xbox Live and PlayStation Network both allow players to chat live while gaming. They have become havens for hate speech against women and minorities. What I had noticed and witnessed was what, what I call like linguistic profiling, like just based on how somebody sounds, you know, they kind of lash out in like very like a inappropriate ways. What is trash talk? That idea right there is so completely alien to me. I mean, minorities, they cannot possibly handle trash talk. I mean, the woman in the clip coming up next, she cannot handle herself against the oppressive patriarchy. Who votes for mission? Do they allow girls to play Call of Duty in America? Wow, they allow morons to play Call of Duty in America? Oh, that woman actually defended herself. It's almost as if minorities can handle themselves like grown adults. And by the way, if you think that the trash talk is getting too much, you can almost always use the mute button. And FYI, just because people use trash talk that's racial or sexist does not mean that therefore the person that did the trash talk is actually racist or sexist. Basically, people trash talk each other to make sure that other people that are playing against them are actually distracted. Essentially, it's a just of a moment thing. It's not really something that is meant to be taken seriously. Perhaps not surprisingly, James Alex Fields Jr., the white supremacist charged for Hire's death, was no stranger to video games. In 2010, his mother filed a complaint against him, claiming he struck her in the head and locked her in the bathroom because she told him to stop playing video games. Prior to the invention of video games, white supremacists were always motivated by their ideology to commit crimes. To say that that guy who was a gamer was motivated by gaming to commit the crime is completely dishonest because gaming does not enable violence against other people because gaming does not have an ideology that commands people to kill people. Essentially, the guy that went to Charlottesville, he essentially was motivated by his white supremacist ideology to commit the awful acts that happened during that day. You cannot really blame video games for their actions if he was actually motivated by something else that led to the death of that person. Anyway, that's enough of this video. It's a bunch of straw mans, a bunch of Newton laws, a bunch of misrepresentation. Essentially, this video is propaganda, and I'm glad that the most people that watched that video did not really buy into the ideas of that video. Until next time, you guys, take care.